All right, Internet. This may be the shortest video we've made. Um, not due to the fact that it was super easy, just due to the fact that I think it's somewhat simple to explain. Um, so, as per usual, I, I logged into Natas21, the new challenge, and I got confuzzled, confused, and um, I cheated, as per usual. But I cheated and I learned, so hopefully next time I do a CTF that's somewhat in relation to this type of attack, I won't have to cheat as hard. So at least I know what it looks like. Anywho, um, so we're going into Natas21 and we're trying to get to 22. So this, well, as soon as you log in to Natas21 from the previous, sesha, the previous uh, challenge, you'll see that there's two statements here. One that basically notes that there is a co-located site that's located here. And then also it lets you know that you're, reg you're logged in as a regular user and you have to log in as admin to get the, get the password as per usual in the previous like two to three challenges. And interestingly enough, if you actually open up the source code, which I have open above here, you can see it's quite uh, short. So as per usual, we kind of ignore the header, don't really care about that. Um, and then down here we have only just one function and that function is similar to what we've seen previously where basically it's going to print the credentials, it's going to give us the answer as long as we have a session um, that has the admin set as uh, the key and the value set as one. So this is, this is the function we've seen previously quite a bit. And what we need to do is we, we basically need to set admin equal to one and if we do that within the session then we'll actually get the password. Below here we just have a session start and credentials so there's nothing special there. So that's all the code we have so far. There's nothing extra there. Um, but when you actually go to the additional website, so if you go to this one with the experimenter, um, let me close that out, you'll see that it prompts you with some interesting stuff here. So we have um, three different inputs and we have um, some CSS changing here. And you can see that it mentions once again that this is co-located and that's going to be important to remember, the co-location piece. So we have the three inputs here and we can put really anything we want in here and once you input that in there then it's going to correlate directly to what you see here. And to show you an example of that we will do uh, right, we'll do 1000 percent, let's change that to percent and then we'll change this to green. Push enter and you can see that I've almost broken the screen. Let's, uh, let's take that down a little bit, it's a little intense. 200, ah, see it takes pixels as well, I didn't know that. So we'll go with um, percentage. So 200% and right green. So it's basically adjusting the CSS formatting on the table or on the, on the screen. And when you update that, uh, there's a few things that are happening in the background. So if we jump back into the source code, because they have the source code here, you can see there's a few things happening. And let me go down a bit further. Um, anything below this dotted line basically is for the experimenter website. Um, so as per usual, ignore the header, don't care about that. Uh, session start is basically stating that once you refresh a git or a post, the session is going to begin. It's going to give you a session ID. Uh, below this, this is probably the most important and interesting function. Everything else is kind of nice to have. Um, and I'll skip over this and explain it later just so we can cover the rest. Uh, the next piece is debug. So I've actually found that having this debug statement is quite useful because if we jump back into the piece here, if you include the debug in the URL, so we've talked about this in previous challenges, so you just do a question mark for the command that you want to put in, and you put in debug, and you push enter, and it's going to show you specifically what's being, uh, what's being put out through the function that's actually doing a lot of the stuff in the background to make this screen look the way that it looks. And if we um, post this, so currently we just did a git, we didn't post anything to the server. Um, if we do an update, we're posting it. So if you do update, and then we do a debug off after that update, so let's debug once again. We can see that we posted to the server and we posted a series of um, key value pairs inside of an array. And each of these key value pairs uh, have different uh, keys. So the key here is the align piece. So we have a line for the key here, which is associated to that. Um, we have the font size, which is the key, and we have the, the BG color um, for the key. And then we can see our associated values here for yellow 100% in the center. Now there's an, another uh, key here and another value that we've not seen because it's kind of in the background hidden. And that's going to be the submit key and also the value of update. So this is going to come in handy when we're looking at the function. So if I actually scroll back up to the function I was mentioning that I'd skip over, you can see the submit piece that I referenced in the page here. So this is the key that we're looking at here in the debug statement. So that's the submit piece. And then basically the key associated to it's update. Because what we're doing is we're updating the server when we actually push update on that screen here. Uh, wrong one. When we push on 
this one here when we select update that's the that's the value that we're putting through to the submit key so the interesting thing here is that basically what this states is that anything that is put in the submit uh, section for request so if there's a request that comes in with a submit we're automatically going to associate that request to a key value pair and that's important to remember because if we look back up here on the main page not the co-located experimenter page but the main page we see that they're basically asking for a session key value pair of admin one. So that means that if we input admin one inside of, um, inside of this, basically this request or this post, then hopefully we'll get back a session ID that, that kind of matches what we need to get the password. Um, the rest of this is basically explaining what valid keys are. So it tries to validate the key, but in reality, it actually repeats itself here. And here you can see it's the same, the same command so this is kind of nulling itself this piece down here and that was really all I wanted to explain in the code so we'll actually jump out of the code and we'll go back into this and uh, first things first uh, like I said I did cheat and there's a few different things that I found quite useful um, so the NOJ as usual did a great job at explaining and didn't do a, didn't do an amazing job at explaining how this is done I had to actually read probably eight to ten answers to this um, but they gave a simple uh, explanation of how to get to the answer through uh, burp and I did it through Zap because I just have Zap open, so I tried to learn more about Zap. And here you can see kind of they, they talk through the explanation of what they're doing, um, and then they make the changes here and actually give you the answer uh, down here. Um, another one is the two YouTube channels that I've watched quite a bit, which is Chris Dale. He did it through Burp as well. Um, he did a pretty good job at explaining the importance and uh, the flaws behind this and the security to secure it. So you should definitely watch that one. And then of course, uh, John Hammond does some stuff in um, Python and all that good jazz. So with that being said, we're actually going to play around here. So the, remember the end goal is to get admin equals one so we can get the credentials here. And the uh, one important another thing I'll put out is session management. So this is a cheat sheet from OWASP that I thought was uh, it's super long. I didn't read the whole thing, um, but it gives you some insight into the importance of managing sessions properly and how there's a lot of faulty faults in that. And what we're doing really here is um, the type of attack that, that's occurring here is a uh, basically a co-located websites that are sharing different sessions that can be shared amongst the two. So I'll draw some stuff here. Um, let's. See if I can make this smaller. Yeah, okay. So we have our two websites, right? So we'll put on this side, we'll have our main website. And then on this side, we'll have our experimenter website. So our experimenter website can take input. And then our uh, main website is going to give us the output of the password, right? So the input that this can take, remember, is the uh, input here. But also it can take uh, basically any key value pair and if it's if it's put into a post for it via the submit then it's going to actually put that into a key value pair in the session so what we want to figure out is a way to actually add on to this array so this array all we really want to do is we want to add admin and we want to add equals one to this array somehow some way and I really didn't know how to do that at first um, because I try to play around with entering stuff into these input value and these input values. But remember, these input values already have a dedicated section for themselves, so you can't really change much of that that's already sitting there. So what we have to do here um, is basically input something that's not being shown on the screen. And if we actually go to inspect, uh, so actually let me update this. So I posted something, and if I go to the inspect section here. And we go to storage and we look at our cookies, not our cookies, sorry, our network, that's what we wanted. Refresh that, resend. So we have a post message that we sent out. So if we expand this a bit, I started playing around inside of the network section to see if I could find what we requested. So, and this is actually after I knew the answer. So I knew the answer, I knew how to get to everything. I just wanted to figure out how you can find this information through the browser and not just, you know, use an application like Zap or Burp to figure it out. And actually, if you go to the network section inside of Firefox, um, there's no uh, show, there's nothing shown here for the request because this is the header section, so it's not going to show um, the body of what you're putting in. But if you go to the request section under here, you can see specifically what you've submitted. You've submitted the align key, the center value, the font size key, the 100% value, etc. And then if you show this in raw form, it it looks very similar to what I've seen in previous answers. Um, so we can see that we're, what we're submitting in the raw in the raw context. So that's nice to see and understand how that's being submitted. So remember, our goal here is basically to add just one additional row here. 
So we want to add admin here equals one. That's our goal. So somehow we need to add that in there. And I was playing around with this and you can obviously not change this. And the reason being is that, that we need some sort of proxy between ourselves and the server so we can make adjustments um, like, you know, on the fly. And that's where zap and burp come into play where you basically have, or you could do it within a Python script like the other answers have as well by just incorporating it into the, the kind of the session cookie that you're sending off or the request you're sending off to the server, you can add that into there with a Python script. But with Burper's um, Zap, that's why they have the proxy piece. So if we have Zap in the center, um, this is us, right? This is our server. And then when we send something off, we want to edit it on the fly and we want to add admin equals one in there. So when it goes here, we have that additional piece so it's included in there and we can actually get the right get the right session ID back because once we do that it's going to tack all that into a session ID it's going to send us back uh, a session ID and that session ID is what we can actually then apply to the main website which is co-located with this website I told you it was going to be short <laughs> I lied um, and the one last piece so we've gotten our session ID and let me actually walk through this with you so we want to edit this in zap so we can do it on the fly. So I have a zap browser open here and I have some content here and then we have zap open here. So we're actually going to do a basic post here. So let's do a update on this screen. And then once we've updated it, it should reflect here. So we have a post message and we see our post message here is what I've shown you previously in the web browser. So really all we want to do here is add on to this. And to do that, we would just basically open and resend. I'm going to add on to this. I'm going to say admin equals one. I'm going to send this again. So once I've sent it again, we can see that there's an additional um, post message here. So if I close that out, we see our post message here. And once we've posted it, we want to get the session cookie ID, which is here. So that's our session ID for the admin equals one. And then if we actually go into our, um, our, our straight up uh, main page, so this is the main page co-located with the experimental page, we're actually going to post in that cookie. So we'll go to storage cookies here. We'll swap that value out for the cookie we just received. We'll refresh it and we won't get an answer back because I did something wrong. Weird. Okay, anyways, um, there's the answer. So the reason it didn't work is I think it's because I had two separate tab. So I had the experimenter tab open and the original main page open, but this experimenter tab I think was a variant of a previous main page open that I had that originally wasn't attached to this one. I don't really know if you care about this, but I'm going to explain it anyways. Um, so we had the main page one and I had main page two. Um, so then I had uh, E1, so experimenter one, experimenter two. So basically, um, experimenter two is a tag to, tag to uh, main page one, and that's the reason I couldn't get the answer on the previous one. So I basically had to scratch all this and restart over and set up basically a new uh, co-located session. And what I did is I basically took the, um, the post here. So we posted this post here where we added admin one, we got our session ID. So we copied and pasted that session ID into the cookie section um, here. And then I just refreshed, refreshed the page on the main page, which is where I posted that cookie. And then I got the answer back here for Natas 22. And now um, the co-location piece, which is important. So basically we have a server, oops. Um, so we have a server here. And on the server, we have a series of websites and all these websites are sharing resources. And sometimes those websites may be similar and share session IDs as well. So if we have uh, website one and website two, let this be our experimenter and let's be the main page. Um, these two are actually sharing session IDs. So we have uh, these session IDs that are being shared. So if I actually get a session ID from website two, which is the experimenter page, then I can actually apply that to website one and it'll acknowledge me as the admin and then it'll provide the password that we provided back here. And um, this is a, uh, some of the conversation that was uh, in the other answers around security is ensuring that when you have those shared uh, websites that are on a similar kind of infrastructure for shared services or a server, um, you want to make sure that those session IDs aren't shared amongst applications um, unless there's some sort of sanitization and security mechanisms in place to check in addition just the session ID other, other elements um, when you're checking those users. So anywho, that was uh, 21 and I thought it was going to be short. I lied to you. I'm sorry that genuine internet. I'm sorry. I'll see you on Natas 22.